Finance Minister says the government has saved the country from default and it has been put on the right track of economic stability. Minister for Planning has said Pakistan is committed to achieve sustainable development goals to cope with challenges of poverty, global food insecurity and water scarcity. World Bank has approved $200 million in financing to support Punjab in transforming its agricultural sector. All parties Hurriyat conference has expressed grave concern over the miserable plight of illegally detained Hurriyat leaders languishing in different jails of Indian illegally occupied Jammu and Kashmir and India. Russian defense minister has ordered the military to step up operations in eastern Ukraine and other Russian controlled territories. And now the news in detail. Polling for the by-elections in 20 constituencies of Punjab Assembly will be held tomorrow. Polling will start at 8 a.m. and it will continue till 5 p.m. in the evening without any break. Election Commission of Pakistan has made comprehensive arrangements to hold the polling process in a peaceful environment. Security forces have also been deployed outside the polling stations in sensitive constituencies. Meanwhile, the Election Commission of Pakistan has set up central and provincial central rooms for the by-elections. According to the press release issued by the Election Commission of Pakistan on the instructions of Chief Election Commissioner, officers in Karachi and Islamabad are monitoring the delivery of polling materials from the control room. A central control room has also been established in Election Commission in Islamabad. Complaint regarding polling can be registered on the phone number 051-920-44023, 051-9210-8378, fax number 051-920-4404. The control rooms will promptly resolve election-related complaints. Maryam Nawaz has been tested positive for COVID-19. In a tweet today, Prime Minister Mohammad Shabazz Sharif prayed for her early recovery and hailed her for vigorously leading the PMLN election campaign. Minister for Finance Mifta Ismail says the government has saved the country from the default and it has been put on the track of economic stability. Addressing a news conference in Islamabad today alongside Minister for Information and Broadcasting Mariam Aurangzeb, he said poor tax collection and unplanned policies during PTI's four years tenure led to budget deficit and economic crisis in the country. He further said we will increase our tax collection up to 7,400 billion rupees to 7,500 billion rupees. Mifta Ismail vowed to reduce inflation, increase the country's foreign exchange reserves and end load shedding by next year. Minister for Planning and Development Asan Iqbal says Pakistan is committed to achieving sustainable development goals to cope with challenges of poverty, global food insecurity and water scarcity. In his video message after conclusion of the high-level political forum at the United Nations in New York, the minister said Pakistan is the first country that announced sustainable development goals as its national goals. Similarly, our Vision 2025 also included the SDGs in its agenda. He further urged the leaders of the world nations to adopt the same spirit for implementing SDGs. As an Iqbal said, despite having formidable global and national challenges, Pakistan followed its development plans in the partnership with the international community and local stakeholders. He further said development projects are SDGs integrated, data quality is improving and we are harmonizing the data and survey instruments are being standardized. The minister further said that the gender policy framework has been launched to intensify the monitoring based interventions related to gender, health, education and employment. He said during these meetings Kashmir issue was also highlighted. It was stressed that it is the responsibility of international community to play its role to bring an end to information blackout in the Indian illegally occupied Jammu and Kashmir. Prime Minister Mohammad Shabazz Sharif says the protection of minorities' rights and their welfare are among the top priorities of the government. He was talking to member of Punjab Assembly Ramesh Singh Arora who called on him in Lahore today. 
The World Bank has approved $200 million in financing to support Punjab in transforming its agricultural sector by adopting climate smart technologies. The agricultural sector in Punjab is central to country's economy and food security. The Punjab Resilient and Inclusive Agriculture Transformation Project will increase agricultural productivity through efficient and equitable access to water for small farms. It will support farmers to adopt climate smart farming practices and technologies that improve crop yields and conserve water resources. This is Radio Pakistan. In Indian illegally occupied Jammu and Kashmir, the All Party Suryat Conference has expressed grave concern over the miserable plight of illegally detained Hudiyat leaders and activists languishing in different jails of territory and India. According to Kashmir Media Service, the All Party Suryat Conference spokesperson in a statement issued in Srinagar said India is subjecting the Kashmiri political prisoners to vengeance for challenging its illegal occupation over Jammu and Kashmir. He further said most of the Kashmir prisoners are suffering from various ailments and continued denial of basic facilities. The All-Party Suryat Conference spokesperson urged the global rights bodies including UN Human Rights Council, Amnesty International, Human Rights Watch and International Committee of Red Cross to play their role in the release of all Kashmiri detainees so that their lives could be saved. Meanwhile, a special court of India's notorious National Investigation Agency in Jammu dismissed the bail application of journalists Fahad Shah and Abdul Ala Fazli. Russian Defense Minister Sergei Shrago has also ordered that military to step up their operations in eastern Ukraine and other Russian-controlled territories. In a statement issued by the Ministry of Defense, the minister directed to intensify the armed actions in all operational areas to counter the massive rocket attacks and artillery strikes by Ukrainian forces in Donbas and other regions. Meanwhile, five people were killed in the multiple attacks of Russian longer-range cruise missiles in Ukraine's central city of Nippur. Ukraine has accused Russia of using Europe's largest nuclear power plant as a base to store lethal weapons and launch missile attacks on the surrounding areas. In a televised interview, the president of Ukrainian nuclear agency Petro Kotin said the situation at the Seporizhia nuclear plant is extremely tense with up to 500 Russian soldiers are controlling the plant. He further said that the occupiers bring their machinery there, including missile systems, from which they shell the territory of Nikopol. Saudi Arabia says it will boost oil production only in case of a supply shortage in the market. Talking to the media in Jeddah today, Saudi Minister of State for Foreign Affairs Adil Al-Jaber said the decisions on the production will be made in coordination with members of OPEC and OPEC Plus Group. In Indonesia, nine people were killed while one critically wounded in an attack by armed separatists in eastern region of Papua today. In a statement, Faisal Rahmdani, director of criminal investigations, said the incident is the deadliest in recent years in the remote highlands of the area. He attributed the attack to the insurgent group West Papua National Liberation Army. On the first day of first cricket test of two match series against Sri Lanka at Gali, Pakistan in their first innings were 24 runs for two wicket at stumps today. Earlier, Sri Lanka in their first innings were all out at 222 runs. And finally, the weather. More scattered rain, wind and thunder shower with isolated heavy falls is expected in Sindh and Balochistan while isolated rain, wind and thunder shower is likely in northeast and south Punjab, Upper Khyber, Pakhtunkhwa, Kashmir and Gilgit, Baltistan during the next 12 hours. To end the news, here are some of the headlines once again. Polling for the by-elections in 20 constituencies of Punjab Assembly will be held tomorrow. Finance Minister says the government has saved the country from default and it has been put on the same track of economic stability. All parties read conference has expressed a grave concern over the miserable plight of illegally detained Hudiyat leaders languishing in different jails of Indian illegally occupied Jammu and Kashmir and India. And that is the end of the news. For more news and analyses, log on to our website radio.gov.pk and also watch live streaming of our bulletins on the link facebook.com com slash video.